Hello fellas, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to see how to develop the convolution algorithm to convolve two signals and give us an output signal. And what we're going to do is we actually going to convolve a high frequency and a low frequency signal with an impulse response. The high frequency signal has two frequency components. It's got a 15 kilohertz component and a one kilohertz component. And we're going to convolve this with an impulse response. And the impulse response was specially designed to create a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of six kilohertz. So in effect, if we convolve these two signals together, the 15 kilohertz component will be blocked and the output signal will contain just the one kilohertz component. So let's see how to perform this. And um, we're going to do this um, by starting from our standard deviation project, the normal standard deviation project without CMSYS DSP. Cause I mean, we could start from here, but we just need to clean everything about CMSYS DSP. And I don't want to do that. So let's come to, let's come to sketchbook and go to our, our last project was standard deviation before the DSP version. So I'll come to standard deviation and I'll close over here. And from here, I'm going to do a save us to create a new project. So I'm going to click over here, save us. I'm going to call this convolution. Convolution like this. Then I'm going to click here to save. And I'm just going to expand here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all the statistical functions such as mean, variance, standard deviation, and then just have the the project look almost empty. You may wonder why we didn't create from scratch. If we had created from scratch, then we'll need to import our signal and everything again. I find this easier to do than, you know, create from scratch. So I'm just going to clean this, clean this as well. And then we can leave this for plotting signals because we will definitely be plotting our signals. We can clean everything in here and um, we can clean everything in here as well. And we can clean everything. All we need up here is just the import of our signal and then the prototype of the plot function. So that's all we have. This is our project. So we've defined the signal length, which is 320. We know that. And then we've been we've called the signal here by using the extend keyword. We are able to access this array in our convolution.c file or in our main file, if you may. And this function here is the prototype for this function we created earlier to help us plot our input signals. So let's take a look at our input signal again. We said it had, we said it was characterized by high frequency and low frequency components. Although we cannot see with a naked eye that there are low frequency components, we can definitely tell there are high frequency components, right? So let's just plot this signal. I'm going to come over here. The plot function accepts two arguments. The first argument is the address of the array containing the signal. And the second argument is the length of the signal. Let's do that. So this the array. I'm going to pass its address over here. I start with ambassand and then I do this just to pass the address. And then I will just pass signal length over here like this. And I'm going to rebuild. And once that's done, we can click we can click on twos and then click zero plotter. And this is it. If we want to zoom into the signal, we can just minimize it. And you can see this is high frequency stuff. That's why the line is thicker. If we want to zoom out, we can still see it's got higher frequency stuff. Right. So we're going to use convolution to filter this signal here to have high and low frequency, to have just the low frequency components left. And we shall see whether indeed low frequency components is within the signal. Right, so without talking much, let's just dive straight to developing the convolution algorithm. And um, let's come over here. I'm going to put it down here. So we're going to create a function that accepts five arguments. The first argument is going to be the address of the array containing the signal. And then the second argument is going to be the address of the array that would contain the result of the convolution. And the third argument is going to be the address or a pointer to the, um, when I say address, just think of a pointer to that particular array. It's going to be the pointer to the array that contains the impulse response. And then 
the fourth argument is going to be the length of the source array which is uh, the source signal and then the final parameter or the final argument is going to be the length of the impulse response so before we proceed we actually need the impulse response so i've attached another file known as the imp.txt and this file if you open it it's attached to this video if you open it you would find the impulse response i'm just going to bring that impulse response here and it's just an array of 29 elements and um, yeah, it has 29 elements and this was specifically generated in MATLAB. And this impulse response is designed to be a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of six kilohertz. So from the theoretical class, we learned if we convolve this signal, this impulse response with this, with this other signal, keeping in mind the signal contains one kilohertz and 15 kilohertz, What's going to happen is we're going to in effect create a low pass filter and all we're going to have as output will be the one kilohertz component because 15 kilohertz is too high and because this is a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of six kilohertz the output is just going to be one kilohertz so let's experiment with that but before we move on let's just plot the impulse response and see what it looks like 